Okay, let's move on to markets and investing. So I'm getting through this pretty quick. So this is good. So we'll have time for Q&A here. But let's look at what's going on with the market. Basically, Dan and I have been showing this chart over the last couple of weeks. Um, stocks appear to be pretty high valued right now. In fact, a little overvalued historically. Um, currently, the price earnings ratio for the S&P is at a little over 22. History has shown us it's been around 16 uh, for a historical average. So we are definitely overvalued. But keep in mind that this is also during a time that we are at historic low interest rates. So what we're showing here is that for the last 40 years, interest rates were declining and settling around 2%. But the Fed came out and dropped interest rates due to the COVID situation. They dropped them to zero. And they're saying that they're going to keep those at zero for a couple of years. So in light of what you can get in a fixed income or bond type of yield versus the stock market, um, it may make sense that the stock market is a little bit overvalued right now in this current interest rate environment. So what can we expect moving forward? We're looking at more moderate rates of return out of portfolios. So low interest rates and high stock valuations basically equate to lower returns in the future. And investors should consider opportunities to look at how to adjust their portfolio to continue meeting their goals. Looking at this chart, we're basically saying that if you looked his, at history from 1975 to through 2019, the stock market had returned an average of 12%. Now that's a gross number that is no fees, no trade costs, no nothing. That's just a pure number for the S&P. And the uh, bonds during that same period from 1975 to 2019 returned about an 8% gross rate of return. So a blended portfolio of 60% stock, 40% bond would have yielded a gross 10% annualized rate of return. And a 70-30 blend would be about a percent higher. So what you're seeing here is basically gross numbers. So you got to figure on average after ex fees and expenses, you're about 2% below that. Um, the next column talks about just the last 10 years from 20, 2009 through 2019. What you saw was a little shift in U.S. stocks, gross return of about 14%, so a little higher, but bonds down about 2%. So they were lower. It still yielded the 10% annualized rate of return gross in a 60-40 portfolio and 11% in the 70-30. However, the shift also added more risk to the portfolio because you were increasing your stock position because it was growing faster than in the past. What we're forecasting moving forward and what we're looking for over at least the next couple of years is about a 7% gross rate of return out of U.S. equities. However, the bond rates due to interest rates falling and being set by the Fed at zero, we're only expecting about a gross 2% rate of return out of the bonds portfolio. So when you have a blended portfolio, the traditional 60-40 is going to look at about a 5% gross rate of return 70-30 portfolio, about 6%, so significantly less. So what we need to do is adjust some of our expectations or look at different ways to manage the portfolio moving forward. So some of the investment considerations that uh, we are looking at at Daniel Coogan Associates and, and considering as we're planning and doing uh, asset allocation is we believe the recession is over and the recovery is well entrenched to continue. We are on a growth path, okay? However, it will be slower uh, than in the past. New times require new thinking for strategic asset allocation. Things are different. In a zero interest rate environment, you have to look for other opportunities to bolster that portfolio and help you carry it through to reach your long-term goals.
Equity markets are likely to be higher a year from now, okay? Modestly higher. But what we have to remember is that there's going to be volatility, okay? It would not surprise us to have one or two 20 plus corrections to the downside in the market over the next year. So we have to pay attention. We have to make sure that we're properly asset allocated and that we are invested for the long term moving forward. Yields are going to continue to stay low for at least two years as the recovery takes until at least the end of 2021. Again, we got to stay focused. What are the goals and what's the plan to get there? Governments in the United States, Europe, and Asia are fully committed to putting money into economies to sustain recovery. That's been very evident, and that's one of the reasons that we're in the shape we are right now and why the stock market is performing the way it is and the bond market is holding um, during this time because the Fed has got involved. Uh, fiscal policy and monetary policy have been very, very proactive during this time period. A couple of the places that we're looking to um, increase the um, performance of the portfolio is in high dividend stocks and high yield bonds. So they are attractive. Uh, we don't want to get over balanced with those, but they need to be considered as essential in the portfolio moving forward. So what can you do uh, in this world of moderate returns? Well, you can evaluate your spending plans, distinguish between needs and wants. What does the next couple of years look for you from a spending perspective? Are there some ways that you can make adjustments? Okay, so we believe the portfolios are gonna give us a return, but it's going to take a little bit longer to make those average numbers because of expected volatility over the next year or two. Can I adopt a variable spending plan? Are there things that are in your budget that maybe you don't have to do every year, you could do it every other year. What kind of discretionary things are going on that you can spread that out a little bit? The next area is assess the risk preference um, of your investment strategy. Look at opportunities to enhance your performance of your portfolio on money that is not needed for the next 10 or more years. Can we be a little bit more aggressive understanding that things are gonna be volatile, but what can we do with long-term money to up the average rate of return. And then the final thing is, how do we optimize the portfolio? Okay, there's opportunities in less liquid, higher returning investments. Again, those would have to be used for long-term uh, portfolios, uh, 10 plus years, but that's another way to bring some of these things in that maybe aren't in a traditional portfolio to help boost performance over time during these low interest rate times we're in. So to give you an example of what I'm talking about, uh, we've uh, created an example of a couple that's, let's say, about five years out from retirement. And looking at the two pie charts, you see the traditional approach. And what the traditional approach of a 60-40 portfolio has been to use 60% of the portfolios in U U.S. large cap stocks, pretty much core stocks, your, your large cap um, high dividend paying companies versus investment grade bonds at about 40%, which are your safe, more secure, high rated bonds. Now, if we compare that portfolio to an optimized portfolio, again, what are we trying to do? We're trying to look for places that we can interject a little bit more um, performance into the portfolio over the next five to 10 years. That portfolio would be more of a 45% uh, large cap stocks, focusing a little bit more on high dividend stocks, not necessarily large cap, but companies that are paying high dividends and adding a little bit of emerging markets, which tend to be more volatile, but have provided a higher average rate of return over the last 20 years versus the U.S. market. Those are new opportunities that are out there. And having a little bit of that in the portfolio can, over the long haul, 
give you a little higher rate of return. Opportunistic income. So it's looking for other things besides investment grade bonds. And that's where we were talking about high yield bonds. Now the credit rating isn't quite as good, but if you get a good blend of those uh, type of bonds to spread your risk among many companies, which our money managers do a great job of doing, that's another place to look at. High yield uh, bonds along with investment grade bonds. And then finally, uh, about 15% in uh, alternative type investments. What are alternatives? Alternatives are things like private equity. We've got some great money managers that manage private equity uh, portfolios. These are companies that are not traded on the exchanges. So how do I get into that company before it becomes a publicly traded company? Um, there's these opportunities out there and we have ways to take advantage of them. Uh, commodities is another area that we look at as an alternative investment uh, strategy. Real estate, there's many things out there that are not traditional stock and bonds that we can incorporate into the portfolio for long-term value in generating the uh, returns that you need. So these are the things we wanna look at. Now let's look at the uh, boxes which show how the two different portfolios may work over a five-year period. And again, data constructed by City National Rockdale for forecasting, where they're doing the research on this. So let's take a $2 million portfolio, that's the box on the top left, and compare it, what happens over five years, and how much income we can expect off of that portfolio in retirement, comparing the $2 million portfolio against the traditional and the optimized. So when you're looking at this chart, the five-year projection shows the traditional portfolio would grow from $2 million to $2.5 million. I'm in the middle column right now. So a traditional stock and bond portfolio uh, in this low interest rate environment would grow about $520,000 over five years, from 2 million to 2.5. In retirement, we could expect in a traditional portfolio to generate about $42,800 a year and that income be sustainable throughout an average lifespan. Now we compare that over to the optimized portfolio, which is the pie on the right, where we've brought in the other investment strategies and integrated those in the five-year projection in that portfolio would be a growth up to $2.76 million. So $760,000 generated over five years on that original $2 million investment. However, the sustainable retirement income for that portfolio throughout retirement would be $61,800. And you might be saying, wow, that's a big jump from 42000 in a traditional portfolio to $61,800. Um, it is, but where is some of that increase coming from? The fact that the optimized portfolio continues to generate a 1% to 2% higher net rate of return to the investor throughout retirement. So you have more money available to take as income over the same time frame. So I hope you can follow that, the difference between the traditional 60-40 and optimized uh, portfolio where we're, we are increasing the risk a little bit. If you go back to the pie charts, the equities in the optimized is 67%, okay? So it was 60 in the traditional. So you have increased your equity exposure by 7%. You've also increased a little bit of risk with lower rated bonds, high yield bonds in versus the investment grade bond portfolio. But alternatives can be fairly neutral. So um, we basically went from a 60-40 equity bond blend to a 67-33. Okay, so I hope this was helpful for you guys to see that. We believe that moving forward, you know, we're, we're still moving in the right direction. However, 
We have seen some signs of weakness like we talked about with what's going on in Arizona and Texas and how they've had to slow down their reopening. So that's gonna put a pause on some things. It's gonna make other uh, states look at what they're doing and should they slow down their reopening, so on and so forth. So we are gonna see how that all shakes out, but we believe we're on a path to move forward. We believe we've resolved some of the questions early on on what really allows us to reopen, considering you know things like the social distancing, should we wear a mask, should we not wear a mask, things like that. 